welcome to this module of polyacrylate additives. I'm your host, Michelle Gabriel Caldwell, Applied Technology Specialist for BIC. The coatings industry has seen a dynamic change concerning environmental factors. We can say that polyacrylates for wetting and dispersing were the pioneering chemistry to work in exclusive aqueous coatings. They provided a chance to lower VOC and still maintained a decent level of performance, particularly compared to the standard solvent-based systems. The switch to lower VOC occurred in the early 80s. As we can see on this timeline, BIC was in the lead for benchmarking many of these trends and continues to move forward in technology advancements. Polyacrylates are polyfunctional with linear backbones, aliphatic or aromatic groups, and the standard tenants of wetting and dispersing additives like a resin and pigment affine part, all for the benefit of stabilizing inorganic pigments, organic pigments, and effect pig pigments in aqueous coatings. Deflocculation is still the primary focus. This is done via electrostatic stabilization, particularly when using some of the older chemistries like ammonium polyacrylates and sodium polyacrylates. The appreciation of understanding this move and the shift in the culture from solvent-based systems to water-based systems is critical. There were many systems that did not use additives at all because of the lower differences in surface tension between the pigments and the system. But in water-based systems, it's extremely critical because that surface tension difference is large. And additives are absolutely very critical in water-based systems. In order to achieve proper flow, leveling, good viscosity reduction for improved grind properties, as well as getting down to the primary particle, it's essential to use wetting and dispersing additives for aqueous systems. While these initial products provided great dispersion properties, there wasn't great wetting, and there were some limitations, particularly when it came to sensitivity of counter ions and any pH changes. Understanding these shortcomings led the way to new developments. Switching to electrosteric stabilization mechanisms via the incorporation of side chains now gave what appeared to be a combination of additives. Whereas before, a standalone wetting and a standalone dispersion additive was used. This was all housed in one additive now. This chemical change enhanced the viscosity reduction as well. And you could see the difference between using no additive at all, the sodium acrylate, and now the DISRIC-199, providing enhanced viscosity reduction properties. When making proper additive selection, it's important to note the grind process. Is it resin containing? And if so, what's the compatibility of the additive and the resin system? Another question, Will the additive actually reach the pigment before the resin? Will there be competitive absorption? Proper additive selection ensures that there is an additive that's robust enough to reach the pigment system first. And conversely, if the system is resin-free, different additives are needed to ensure proper viscosity reduction for enhanced grinding. Another new development showcase versatility of polyacrylates. We start here with the basic backbone. We 
We add medium polarity modification to allow for compatibility in low or medium polar systems. Yes, we're talking solvent borne systems. And then we add a polar modification for compatibility in waterborne systems and also to ensure pigment wetting. Then we place neutral pigment affine groups for the stabilization of both organic and inorganics. And lastly, we add basic pigment affin groups to increase the versatility of the pigment selection. And now there's one additive that can be used for Y compatibility and pigment versatility. Dysrubic 2055 works beautifully in solvent-borne systems like aldehyde resin and waterborne systems like acrylates and melamines. We began this conversation referring to environmental changes. The fact is waterborne coatings inherently have very low protection due to the nature of their compatibility. If it's water loving, it won't stop water damage, no matter the end use. This called for more research and development, particularly since the side chains are very hydrophilic and this actually increases the overall hydrophilicity of the coating itself. Once cured, water sources can penetrate the coating, leading to either corrosion or stain issues. And that water sensitivity steeps into the coating, causing adhesion problems. We've incorporated a few strategies to reduce that water sensitivity. The first is to actually use resin affinic side chains with lower polarity systems to change the hydrophilicity to a little hydrophobicity. The other is to use a structural rearrangement that actually takes place during the curing phase. And the third is to use smart adaptation where we're using both polar and non-polar component parts that allow for the hydrophobic portion to be left behind after the curing phase. Big flagship of products are full of surprises. Each chemistry is certainly crafted for specific pigments, affinity and troubleshooting solutions, but there's a lot of versatility too. It's been fun reviewing polyacrylate wetting dispersing additives with you. Please test your knowledge with our quizzes and review the additional resources and join us for more content. I hope to see you soon. Bye.